His instructions were carried out, but Kalar Ho took Charius by the hand and led him aside by himself. What have you decided to do, Charius? she asked. Are you going to take Satira and the beautiful Rodogune to Syracuse as well? Charius blushed. blushed. It is not for myself that I am taking them, he said, but as servants for you. May the gods never make me so mad, cried Kalar Ho, as to have the queen of Asia as my slave, especially as she has shown me hospitality. If you want to please me, send her to the king. She has kept me safe for you as if it were her own brother's wife she has had in her charge. There is nothing I would not do for you, said Charius. You are mistress of Tatira, and all I have won from the enemy, and, above all, of my heart. Kalarho was delighted. She kissed Charius, and at once told her servants to take her to Tatira. Tatira was in the hold of a ship, along with the highest-ranking Persian women. She knew nothing at all of what had happened, nor even that Kalarho had found her Charius, since she was heavily guarded and no one was allowed to approach her or tell her anything of what was happening. When Kalarho came on board with the captain escorting her, everyone immediately panicked and began running all over in their confusion. Then one man said quietly to another, The Admiral's wife is here. Tatira gave a loud, profound sigh and began to weep. Fortune, she cried, you have preserved me to this day so that I, a queen, may look upon my mistress. Perhaps she has come to see what sort of a slave she has acquired. At this she raised a loud lament. At that moment she found out what it is for a noble person to be a captive. But it was a rapid change of fortune that the god brought about. Kalarho entered quickly and embraced Tatira. Be of good heart, queen, she said. For queen, you are and always shall remain. It is no enemy whose hands you have fallen into, but your dear friend whose benefactor you have been. It is my Charius who is admiral. It was his anger against the king that made him admiral of the Egyptian fleet because of the delay in recovering me. But his anger is past. He has made his peace and is no longer Persia's enemy. Get up, my dear, and go in good heart. You too shall have your own husband, for the king is alive, and Charius is sending you to him. And you get up too, Rodogune, the first Persian woman to be my friend, and go to your own husband, and as many other women as the queen wishes, and remember Kalarho. Tatira was astonished to hear this. She could neither believe it nor disbelieve it, but Kalarho's character was such that no one could think she would mislead people in so serious a situation, and the emergency called for immediate action. Now, there was among the Egyptians a man called Demetrius, a philosopher who was known to the king of Persia. He was advanced in years and superior to the other Egyptians in culture and character. Charius called this man to him and said, I wanted to take you with me, but instead I'm asking you to undertake an important mission for me. I'm sending the queen in your charge to the great king. This will also give your greater, under, greater standing with him and will assure a pardon for the rest. At this he appointed Demetrius commander of the ships that were being sent back. Everybody wanted to go with Charius. They thought more of him than their countries and their children. But he chose only 20 ships, the biggest and best, because he was going to cross the Ionian Sea. On board, these, he put all the Greeks who were there, and all the Egyptians and Phoenicians he found to be most energetic. Many Cypriots embarked, too, as volunteers. All the rest he sent home. He gave them a share of the spoils so they could look forward to returning to their families, because their standing would be improved. No one who asked anything of Charius failed to get it. Kalarho brought all the royal jewels to Tatira. She would not take them, however. No, she said. You wear them. Beauty like yours deserves to be royally adorned. You need presents for your mother and offerings for your country's gods. 
I have left in Babylon more than there is here. May the gods grant you a good journey, safe home, and may you never again be separated from Chariots. You have behaved properly to me in every way. You have shown a noble character worthy of your beauty. It was a fine treasure that the king left in trust with me.